Hi St Simons, another service by YouTube, so unfamiliar and yet everything is unfamiliar at the moment. And yet God is with us, he knows, and we're going to have this service and we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, which is going to be read by Ella and Malachi, and then I'm going to say something about it and Nina's going to end with prayer. It's great that we can all join together in this way. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time and we pray that each one of us would be drawn closer to you and be inspired to reach out to others as we have this time of worship. In Jesus' name, Amen. This reading is taken from Ezekiel 37 verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me to and fro among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came to life, together, bone by bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came up to life and stood upon their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel, they say. Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. O oh my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This passage is one of the most encouraging in the Bible, and it's certainly one of my favourites. But I chose it because the Church of England have set it as one of this week's readings. It's the season of Lent, when we recall Jesus' journey to the cross. And this reading is part of that because it shows us that where there's death and a sense of ghost time, there's a plan for resurrection. When I go out on my one trip of the day, I see a London that I don't recognise. I see a ghost town with just a few figures walking this way or jogging that way. Not many cars. I've just had an email from the bishop indicating that I'll soon be called in to crematorium duty for more funerals than I'm used to conducting. Probably in the next week to ten days this will happen as the effects of the coronavirus really take hold of our city. This is death and it's grim. Is it time for me to be offering a few thoughts on a passage which talks of life from the death when the reality is that there's going to be a lot of difficult bereavement around? Yes, it is. If God is not God of hope, then he's no God at all. In chapter 37 of the book of the prophecies that God gave Ezekiel, here is this vision that God leads him through. He finds himself in a valley where there are all these human bones and skeletons. One gets this barren picture of hopelessness, of dryness, 
of something that once was. There is nothing that Ezekiel, the living human being in the scene, can do about this. It's a place you want to leave and never return. We're made for life, not death. As creatures who are alive, we like to be around other life. We want to be in places that inspire us. We want to be with people who bring out the vitality and the conviviality in us. And we like to create social or work situations in which we can thrive, to eat something fantastic now and again, occasionally to go out and choose something to wear that may make us look reasonably good, if we can find it. Most of these freedoms and opportunities that many in this country would usually take for granted have been bizarrely removed from our lives. It's so strange. It's scary. The reason God brought this vision to Ezekiel by his Holy Spirit was to demonstrate to him that despite the dreadful state in which his people Israel were in, the death, the exile in the foreign land which lasted over 70 years, the potential fragmentation, the fear of the future, there is nothing beyond God's ability, his great planning rescue, his ability to save. There is nothing beyond it. I, like you, am crying out to God every day for this situation that we're in now. We want to facilitate more ways for you to pray. We're setting up a number of WhatsApp groups for people to stay in touch. And we also want to utilise social media for prayer. That's coming. But in our prayers for God to end this bizarre episode in our country's history, our cry must also be that he would use this to change our hearts and to change the hearts of others, turning them to the Lord Jesus Christ, whose resurrection from death to life is the greatest hope that anyone can ever have. The people of Israel did get back from exile, but that celebrated return wasn't merely an end to a time when their arch enemy got the better of them for three generations. God demonstrated great power, even in the midst of great suffering. He showed that, showed that he would bring life out of death again and again in Israel's history. It happened then, and it's also happened recently, just three years after the deathly Holocaust brought about by Hitler. God's plan is to bring life up from death. That's why he took Ezekiel on that walk. All these things, some of them deliberate acts of evil by powerful human beings, God can use for a reason. And the ultimate reason is always the same. To draw people to his son, Jesus, who faced death and overcame it. His sacrifice meaning forgiveness for all sin that is brought before him as people confess and cry out. So what for us in this extraordinary time in which people can't even physically get together to worship the God who loves us, whether our own St. Simon's Church or in anywhere else? OK, first thing, God is with us. Linda Nichols, a bishop from Canada, wrote this in an article earlier this week called Where is God? She writes this. In John 17, Jesus prayed, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. She says, this is not a protection from the world. It is focused on the relationship with God, protecting that intimacy, Jesus and you, with God to be always available. It certainly was not a protection from the effects of sin and pain, which led Jesus to death on the cross. And she finishes by saying, it's the power that is stronger than death itself that raised Jesus to life and promises us the same possibility of life that walks in and through death, not around it. So God is with us in this strange time. That's the first thing. The second thing, God is going to stay. When the people of Israel were released from finally returning to Jerusalem, they found it destitute. In ruins. God didn't wave a magic wand. Read the story in Nehemiah, a great book for rough times. They had to start from scratch and rebuild their city, which had been left ransacked. But God had raised up the people 
as if from death, cut off from the land which he had given them, to life, so that they could reconstruct those walls. People are saying that it could take a long time to get back to where we were. But if we can come to depend on and point others to the only unchanging thing we've got, God's word, in the Bible, that is, he will be with us and stay with us. We'll be stronger and we won't be where we are. Much stronger. Investment in something guaranteed means a better performance. God is with us to stay. And finally, we've got to pray. The whole conversation between Ezekiel and the Lord is a prayer. Ezekiel's confidence could come from nowhere else. You and I are finding that some things around us that we've built security and confidence into are simply falling into the sea like a sandcastle struck by the advancing tide. We've got to be in conversation with God. I find it much easier to keep going when other people are sending me prayer requests or encouragements about how I can praise him, maybe a verse in the Bible. I mentioned in a midweek YouTube video that a good friend of mine who lives nearby, not from St Simon's, is in intensive care with COVID-19. And I've had regular messages from mutual friend, and each time they come, the prayer starts, and I get my family involved too. Some of them know him, and we pray. And we've been watching, and that friend's begun to respond. And you just think, well, goodness me, we're on this journey with God. Are you going to become more of a prayer through all this? It's a choice. It's a hard choice. You can always walk away and say, God, you're such an idiot. Why did you let this happen? Who's going to believe in you now? Everyone's going to run away. And God's reply sometimes sounds like silence. But it never is. It's usually, come here. Go on, come here. And he sits you down, if you give him time, and he walks you through it. And even if the person you're praying for doesn't pull through, God wants to walk us through all these things that we're facing and that we're going to face. And he will. But we must pray. We've started as a family praying every night at 9pm just for a few minutes. It's something that I try to do every morning on my own. I've done it ever since I became a Christian. Doesn't always work. Doesn't always work when you're in a household with other people. Sometimes it's easier being on your own and praying. There's less rounding up to do or persuading. Or when someone isn't in the mood. When you're on your own, you can always get into that place with God. It can be a fight too. But we've got to pray. God is with us, God is here to stay, and we have got to pray. And Lena's, Lena's going to lead us in prayer right now. Let us pray. With familiar words from Psalm 46, verses 1 to 2. God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. So Lord, we choose to trust in you in these unsettling and disorientating times. You remain our source of refuge and strength. We do thank you for your unfailing love and faithfulness towards us and your desire to draw us ever closer to you in every circumstance. You are not absent. Neither are you deaf to our cry for help and mercy. So we bring to you needs in our world. We pray that across the nations, wise and decisive actions are taken to stop the spreading of the coronavirus. We thank you for all the key workers who continue to provide vital service to us all and pray for your protection for them and their families. We are grateful for the tireless commitment of the NHS staff who treat the virus patients. We pray for safety against becoming infected themselves and for provision for all the safety gear that they need. 
we pray for both physical and emotional rest in between their shifts. We lift up family members of our key workers where there is anxiety over safety and comfort where family members need to stay apart from each other at this time. We do also pray for the care of those seriously ill in other ways, not the virus, for their care not to be neglected and lives endangered. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up our leaders and pray for wisdom and discernment on how best to act for the safety and protection of all, in particular the most vulnerable. We pray for financial protection and provision for many in danger of losing employment and income and anxiety over the ability to provide for themselves and their families. We pray for healing for our Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Health Secretary Matt Hancock, who have been tested positive for the coronavirus. We pray for your protection for the Queen and the Royal Family. And we pray for our church leaders nationally and locally as they adjust to lead and care for the church differently. May they continue to act and speak of your life, truth and comfort. And we pray that you will sustain them with your strength and hope for each day as we continue to follow and remain in you in these extraordinary times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for families and friends who are prevented from being alongside those in isolation in intensive care and for your presence to bring comfort in that pain and loss. And we pray for your comfort for those who have lost loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community and ourselves as we adjust to the new measures of social distancing and staying at home. We bring to you our concerns and anxieties and new dynamic dynamics in our households. May we draw ever closer to you at this time. And may your peace be upon our households this week. And as we spend time in prayer this week, we ask that you would bring to mind names of those we might be able to encourage. Would you help us to be attentive to your voice and listen out on how you would want us to respond in loving our neighbour this coming week. May we be your hope bearers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the midst of difficult times, Psalm 46 ends with this encouragement. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So Lord, may your name be praised and may we continue to see you, your works of mercy in our world, our nation, our communities and our families and friends. May this be a time for many to find comfort in you, the joy of knowing you as a Saviour and Lord. And let us close our time of prayer by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as we go into our week, may you know God's peace and presence at this time. And as a way of blessing, I just want to read some words of Paul from Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Reading these words over all of us as we continue to trust in the Lord and in his strength for each day. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. So many blessings to your week and see you on Palm Sunday. <laughs>